Hi guys, welcome to Game On's first episode of 2020. Uh, today we're going to be talking about dice systems. Now, it may seem like role-playing games are just an excuse to have a giant collection of dice, but they actually serve a more important purpose. And we're going to talk about a couple of the systems this week uh, and their different aspects. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about the D20 system, which is what a lot of people uh, remember getting into as the first gaming system, and the D6 system, because there are a lot of neat game systems out there that utilize just these. So obviously, uh, D20 system is the one that a lot of people first got into gaming because of D&D. Yep, D&D, uh, Pathfinder being the other really big one. Um, 13th Age, there's a bunch of different sub-games that, that are based off of the D&D mold. Yeah. They um, use the same system. And the interesting thing about the D20 system is that it's not just a D20 that you use in the game. There's a plethora of different dice numbers that you would have. So you could use, have anything from a 20-sided dice to a 4-sided dice. Um, yeah. We all know the different shapes, the different uh, designs. I mean, that's half of the fun with, with role playing is having the the awesome dice collection. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these systems that you're talking about, they were written to use those dice, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, so just uh, all those gaming systems, it likes to use every single dice that you would get from one of those D20 brick sets that you would buy. So you have spells that will do a d4, whereas some things will do a d12. You have every one of those dice is going to be utilized some way. Well, yeah, and that goes back to the beginning, so D&D. &D. I mean, everybody's, like, pink box uh, original edition came with all the different dice in it, and it, that was part of the cool part of the system was that it had all of these different shapes of dice and rules to accommodate them. Yeah, um, in some instances that can slow down gameplay for some people. Um, having to worry about multiple different uh, subsets of rules for and using different dice for them. But in my experience, it's it's not even so much slowing things down, is it's just all the different special case rules that you have to remember. Yes. Uh, some, some some people really like those, but some people really don't. Well, <laughs> look, I mean, if you've, if you've memorized them, if you know them well, then obviously it's a lot of fun to be able to utilize these different effects, because each, each dice shape has a different odds. Oh yeah, right? definitely. Um, and what's cool about that is that with each one of them having different odds, having the different, having your weapon doing something that does a d12 as opposed to like a d8, you have a better chance of rolling a higher number, doing more damage, but... Well, of course. But yeah, and, 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 and that's part of the fun, but it's just the variability of the weapons, of the spells, of the different effects, right? It's just variety in the game, and variety is fun. Yeah, um, and one, one interesting thing um, about the D20 system is that a lot of the, the gaming systems that use the D20 um, are level-based. Yes. Um, so it, it usually allows you to use more or higher number of sided die. Well, and those systems tend to have a lot of bonuses associated with them, right? Yes. Add-ons to rolls. And so I think that goes in nicely with a with a level system, right? You, as you get higher up, you get higher bonuses. And exactly. Um, and uh, what's what's interesting about the system as well is that uh, it scales linearly. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you're rolling a single dice, then then the the probability distribution is linear. Um, and that can be good because it's it's very predictable to know how high you need to get to succeed at a roll. Um, Whereas if you start rolling combinations of dice, then you get sort of a, a, an uneven distribution or an exponential sort of effect. So. Yes. Um, and also, well, the, the D20 dice also, which in another video we've talked about, helps you build cool tables and stuff. That's so. true. <laughs> One thing that I, I think that, that these systems have, too, because that you're rolling... Um, straightforward dice rolls with linear distributions, they, they tend to have um, uh, attribute defaults as opposed to being skill-based, right? Like you can do things even if you don't have a skill for it yeah. um, because you're rolling off of an attribute. Yep. 
um, which is, is makes the system versatile. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you don't have to know how to do a thing to attempt a thing. Yeah. Which is is can be fun because it means your your character has more opportunity to 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 do things in the game. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, it's interesting that you bring up skills because uh, all the all the D twenty gaming systems I can think of off the top of my head, it likes to use combat as their main their main draw to the game. If you think about D and D and Pathfinder. There's skills on there, but a lot of people go there not for the I'm rolling an investigation, but to hit the troll. Well, yeah, I guess that that is coincidentally true. Um, I'm not sure that it's associated with a dice system. Okay. Um, because there's a lot of D6 systems that are combat. They're war games, so they're they're all about combat too. So I, agree. I, I think that that while it why it, it may be the case that D20 systems tend to mimic the original, the granddaddy of all the, the role-playing games, D&D, &D, which was very combat heavy. Um, and so any of those games that kind of follow in its footsteps tend to be maybe a little bit combat heavy too. Um, I'm not sure that it, it hinges on the dice. No, but I guess in, in my head I was saying is it helps it be a little bit more versatile for some for some systems. Oh yeah, well and again I, that goes to the attribute default thing, yeah. which I think is, is probably its biggest strength, is that it gives you a decent shot to roll your D twenty and succeed at a at some sort of a test or a save or whatever it is, even if you're not trained in it, even if you don't have um, the skills or or uh, some ability to do that other than just a sort of the puncher's chance to get it. Yeah, no, so, that makes sense. So, um, so, but I mean everybody kind of knows D&D, &D, so, so what we're talking about here should be pretty familiar to most people. Um, but it's true of the other systems too, the D20 systems too. Yeah, I'd say so. Alright, so um, do we want to tackle uh, D6 systems next, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, two game systems that we're actually quite familiar with and uh, have near and dear to our hearts are D6 systems. Uh, you have uh, Battletech and uh, I have Traveler. So uh, the cool thing about them is that as much as I want to carry a large bag of dice with me, I really don't need that many. I can just carry a couple D6s with me and I have, I have basically everything that is going to be needed in that rule book with those three or four dice. So, uh, Battletech and Traveler, do you think you could have picked two less similar games to use as our example here? Um, <laughs> it's, it's funny because, I mean, Battletech is, is very much a, a war game, and, and it's, it's very math and, and uh, numbers oriented. It's map placements and, and, and by the numbers. I, whereas Traveler is a monstrous skill-based open sandbox kind of can do anything. Yes, uh, and I think that's why the 2D6 system that it specifically uses it actually works in its favor because uh, it think about it, it keeps, it keeps everything that you want to try to do, all the numbers that you want to try to hit, kind of focused. Um, you're not trying to roll 85, you just need an 8 to pass. Well, sure, it, it, it's intuitive. Fundamentally, yeah. the math is easy in a 2D6 system and it's it's very intuitive. I mean, lots of other games that aren't role playing related, they're board games. They run off a two D six system too. It's it's the one that non role players or first time role players would probably grasp the quickest. Oh yeah. Um, but it it has some some benefits. Again, being intuitive, being not math intensive, people can grasp it right away. Um, the distribution of odds in a two D six system. Is it's got a uh, a gentle probability curve, right? It's yeah. fatter in the center. The six, seven, eight is going to come off the most often. Tapers down to a two or a twelve. Um, but the the odds difference between the most common rolls and the least common rolls, it's not that steep a curve. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it means that you can have a roll that that is easier or harder. It's not linear the way the the D twenty systems are. But it's not so out of whack that you suddenly can't understand 
or, or that it's difficult to understand how hard or how easy a roll would be because you can't calculate the odds in your head, whereas 2d6, you, you can kind of grasp it. Um, so I think that's a big advantage. And, and that tends to be reflected in the rules, um, or at least the, me the, rule, the mechanics rules simplicity. Yeah, right? no, yeah. Because, I mean, it's, it's make this roll and don't worry about all of these subcategories for it. It's yeah, and the very few special case rules, generally speaking, with a, with a, a pure uh, D6 system, which we talk about 2D6, but there are ones that do 3D6 and, and yeah. whatever. But, but it's the same, it works the same way. Um, so rules simplicity and rules consistency, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big one, because, uh, again, without the special case rules, um, Every role that you have to make in the game is generally going to work the same way. Yes. So once you learn how to work the system, you can make any role. Yeah, basically, you don't need to worry about, does this use a d12 or a d10? It's, nope, you just run a 2 or 3d6. So no crazy amounts of rules to memorize. Yeah. Um, no 57,000 books to buy with, with all the rules with all the, that you have to memorize. Yeah. Um, so, again, advantages. Um, and, like you said, if you don't happen to be uh, the kind of person who gets a thrill out of having a giant dice collection, and if you don't, what's the matter with you? But if you don't, D6s, I mean, a couple, a handful of D6s and you're good to go. If yeah. you can play Yahtzee, you can play these games, right? Because <laughs> you're good. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, Do we talk about, oh, we talked about uh, Traveler, we talked about Battletech. Um, th there's a number of other war games that that uh, do that. I mean, Warhammer is basically yeah. Um, I was gonna bring up Dungeon World. Okay. Um, I, cause I I almost said that they seem kind of technical, but then I thought of Dungeon World and how easily free flowing it is with just a two d six, and there's not a lot of extra rules for it. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I, I think because the system is so simple, you can kind of place whatever world on top of the system that you want to. You can make it simple, you can make it complicated, you can make it whatever you want because the dice system is, you know, very, is a, a simple bedrock sort of foundation that you can build on very easily. Whereas um, with the D20 system we talked about earlier, the rules are written entwined with the dice system. Like, the, the rules were written to, to take advantage of those dice and and utilize them, uh, and so so those rules are inherently more complicated, more specialized, because yeah. that was a motivation. But uh, when when you don't have the motivation to write for multiple different dice sides, <laughs> you can keep things pretty focused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, so. and it's a good it's a good system that way. Uh, if you want to focus on what your the role playing aspect of the game, um, and what you're doing. Uh, rather than how to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a good way to just make it work, but not get in the way of the story. Agreed. Um, now there there are uh, a number of other dice systems uh, that we didn't cover this episode, but don't worry. There's a uh, part two to this where we tackle a couple more of the common ones. Um, and really talk about their advantages and disadvantages, or at least their characteristics. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that one. Uh, it will be following shortly. Until then, game on.